Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be speaking with Gabor Harsani. He is, uh, as most of you might know, he teaches and guides people into inner silence, awakening, finding out and connecting with your own being, etc., etc. And uh, hello, Gabor. Hi, Nurit. <laughs> Great to see you. Some of you might know that he actually, we share a lot, uh, uh, same address, same apartment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> same. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we are married. So, yeah, so, same yeah. marriage certificate, etc. Anyhow, today I'm going to uh, ask Gabor to speak with us about a very popular topic. Uh, some call it law of attraction, some call it co-creation, as, as several names, but it, we get many questions about this topic. It seems to be a very critical topic in today's world where we society has seemed to have lost control and trying to get it back by any means possible. It's a huge industry from what I understand. Statistics say that it's a $15 billion industry. Uh, only 3% of the population in the entire world are actually using it and doing it. Some of them are the most successful people. And out of those, only z the success rate is only 0.1%, which is quite low. Uh, there's 40% of the population actually know about it and believe in it, but they're not doing it. And 57% don't believe in it at all. So there you have it. Now let's get away from the statistics and ask Gabor to speak about this topic. And my first question to you is, why is a success rate so low in your opinion? Well, uh, uh, there's, there are many reasons. <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, anything that uh, uh, any seminar or anything new that people attempt to do, really only a really only a very small percent of the population will actually do it and follow the instructions. Most people, uh, most people go to these seminars like law of attraction uh, as as entertainment and something to something to take out oh i did that too and will never ever attempt to do anything uh, even if they attempt it the people usually don't follow instructions the programming of the population is so strong that it does not allow for anything new to enter into that field that's the first reason is that most of the time People don't follow, they are not going to do it. And uh, even if they do it, they do it inadequately and they don't succeed in it. So that's generally the thing that anything new we want to learn, we can't learn because we are so programmed. We, are, we, can, we can only learn something that's already in the programming. So the programming is the, the number one problem. Uh, number two, uh, law of attraction has a, the the knowledge itself has um, a, an extremely basic error, right? Uh, it seems that uh, from what I know about it, law of attraction works with on the basic principle that the mind is that we have to tinker with, we have to clear the mind, we have to clarify our thoughts. We have to uh, uh, basically uh, the base of, of it is let's work with the mind, let's clear the mind, let's clear our thoughts. Uh, clarity is power. Uh, uh, so the, the, the base of law of attraction seems to be the mind, and that's automatically uh, means failure. Uh, the mind as it is today, it's not clear, it's all programmed. Uh, there's not much uh, we can put on the top of programming to make something work. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible here. So the, uh, the first thing to do, for example, 
uh, to make law of attraction work is we have to stop law of attraction. Uh, that's the first thing to do. It's, it's because we have to stop the attraction that we're already experiencing. If we don't stop that attraction, we put something on the top of it, then it's going to be a bunch of chaos and things, chaos and things will not work. So, What do you mean by stop law of attraction? How would you stop it? If it's something that's happening naturally, how would you stop it? Uh, the way to stop the current law of attraction is, is to learn how to step out of the mind in, in, in the way I look at it is we don't want to stop the mind, we want to bypass the mind. First of all, we want to bypass the mind and uh, establish ourselves or go to a operating system within us that is far superior to the mind. Uh, that operating system is based on the intelligence of the body. So how to fight the, the mind without fighting, which is what we need to do, how to stop the law of attraction is to go to an entirely different operation, operational system that is far superior to the mind. So you cannot stop law of attraction by just having the intention of stopping law of attraction. We have to go to a, an entirely different operating system that's already within us. We just have to learn to operate it. Once we establish ourselves and activate that other very intelligent operating system, then we effectively bypassed the mind and therefore we have eliminated uh, the initial law of attraction that we are experiencing at this moment. Who that was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And actually, from working with you uh, for the past uh, twelve years, and and uh, watching your students practice what you teach as well in your courses, I have witnessed actually people becoming very successful with it. Some uh, become very successful uh, in their business. Uh, some uh, with relationships, uh, all kinds. And you and I both uh, consistently have experienced and witnessed all kinds of synchronistic events in our lives. Um, but something that we need suddenly appears. Um, can you explain more about that? How that happens? Well, one of the important uh, if not the most important ingredient of actual manifestation, uh, the one that actually works, uh, is uh, based on uh, uh, based on synchronicity. Uh, you, we, we we might have noticed in our lives that some some people uh, some some group of friends etc are always successful even though they don't do much, right? And uh, everything, they seem to be lucky and everything just works, right? Even though some group is working very hard with very little results, right? So the difference is synchronicity. Uh, we could call it luck even. We create our luck by creating, by deliberately creating the synchronicity that is the most appropriate at this moment for the type, for the type of intention that we want to have. So if I have a goal, an intention, okay, we, first of all, we have to create the synchronicity that will allow that manifestation to happen. Synchronicity is a context. We call it context. Uh, before I was referring to this other operating system that's not based on the mind, that's based on the body's intelligence. So based on the body's intelligence, we have the context, that we have to activate. Once the context is activated, based on the, our intention, we can make synchronicity line up so that we can actually have that manifestation. That is the universal law. The, the principle that they use to keep fixing the mind and the thoughts is not working as it is evident by the statistics. It's not going to work, even though for many people, that is, or, that is already a very significant part of their self-image. 
So if it's part of the self-image, man, it's difficult to get it out of there. <laughs> it just doesn't work. You can keep it or not keep it, but we have to follow actual universal laws to, to make that, to make the actual manifestation and the law of attraction happen. I don't know if it's clear. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, now you're talking about uh, getting out of the mind or bypassing the mind. I know many people like myself before I met you. I was convinced that I knew how to do that. I was convinced that I was not in the mind because I was involved in so many different types of awakening teachings that talked about going beyond the mind. So I assume that if I know so much intellectually about going beyond my mind and not being in the mind, I must be there. And uh, I think it was uh, one time when I met you, I had the shock of my life when you told me that what I was studying was still in the mind. I got quite agitated <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't want to see you again, but it was only later when I actually met up with you again and you showed me how to activate that um, body, universal intelligence that runs our body. For the first time, I experienced what it was like not to be in the mind. And the significant part of that to me was that I wouldn't have known what it's like to be in the mind or not to be in the mind if I hadn't had the, the um, opportunity uh, to actually get out of it, even if it was temporary, I, it, it was that experience that led me to know without a doubt that now I'm not in the mind and that before, even though I thought I was, I was in the mind. So right. how can you help people know, because I'm sure a lot of people are watching this and say, yeah, 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 I'm not in the mind. I'm, you know, I've been meditating for many years. I'm not in the mind. How can people know whether they're in the mind or not in the mind for real? Uh, well, the, the only sure way that I know of is actually to experience how not to be in the mind uh, and experience the distinction between the piece of the mind uh, when, I, when I do this, I show the horizontal, which is the mind, this duality, past, future. So the, 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 the only way that I know of is that the, we must experience the peace that comes from the intelligence of the body versus the peace that comes when the mind calms down. The mind runs, 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 usually programmed mind is running, 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 you meditate. Uh, meditate, 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 the mind stops, and there comes the peace of mind. That is not what we are after. Mm -hmm. The, what I call angular reality, is an experience which is direct, direct experience, experiencing existence, experiencing the intelligence of the body. Directly, and that peace, that feeling is a different feeling than the peace of mind. And I think to really get it, the person needs to experience the difference. Yeah. What would you say is that uh, once somebody is able to step out of the mind, you call it bypassing, we, we a lot of people don't like that word, but what you mean by that is not shoving it under the carpet. It's mean what you mean by that is redirecting our attention to the intelligence of the body, the universal intelligence. So I just want to clear that up before yes. people start screaming about bypassing. Uh, so would you say that by bypassing the mind or not being in the mind for real, that would actually allow us to let go of what it is that we're after when we want to manifest something. Because many teachers talk about the biggest problem in manifestation is not knowing how to let go once you have something that you want. And that usually acts as a, an interference in the actual manifestation. So would that 
Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, definitely the letting go is the problem, even though when we are listening to uh, speaking about this subject, that seems like it must be the easiest thing. Okay, let's go. So people put emphasis on, uh, on specifically uh, talking about what they want, getting emotionally into it, putting enthusiasm into it, clarifying, clarifying, clarifying the picture, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, do it. That's the work that they put into the manifestation, okay? And then the, the very last thing that uh, people who teach this promote is looking okay, now let, let it go. But it seemed like such an insignificant part, <laughs> the letting go. When in fact, it's just the reverse. The letting go part is the most important. Okay. First of all, first of all, to keep on, it's a huge error to keep on focusing on the picture that you want, put in enthusiasm, put in energy, put in all that without the letting go. I tell you why, because uh, the a person's mind is full of existing programming. So if I have this existing programming on the top and then I start manifesting, I start creating my picture and putting all the work in, I created it on the top of existing programming. That's an error. Okay, it, you can do that. It's like I'm, uh, I, 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 I make a very nice dish, but yesterday's dish is still in the pot, so I put it on the top. So that's how it is. Congratulations. You know, nothing much, will, nothing good comes out of it. That is, that is why, that is why there is an, that is why the statistic reflects the unsuccess of this. 3% try from that 0.1% succeeds, stuff like that. Okay. So it does not work. So the most important thing in this process that they co describe, uh, generally speaking, is the letting go. So first we got to have a clean sheet. First we have to remove the existing programming which creates the existing manifestation. The existing programming creates my world, creates everything in my life. So that has to be bypassed or that has to be removed uh, that has to be dealt with first before I start cooking something on the top of already cooking. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. So people would say, okay, that makes sense. Right? Okay. Uh, let's go to the next step. Okay. So uh, how to, how do we, how can we remove, how can, how can we deal with this programming? Most people say, okay, well, I meditate, you know, I get, I get my mind quiet. That should remove some of the programming. It's not going to remove the programming. It will calm the mind. Uh, or some people say, okay, you have programming, which is not good. Let's do, let, let's do different therapy. And the therapy would find out why I programmed this here and why I did program it there. And let's, let's face it. Let's feel it. Let's go into the therapy. That also doesn't work. I'm so sorry. I know that. <laughs> Uh, and they're done know, that. <laughs> yeah. People throw, you know, the kitchen sink at me when I say therapy is good and it works. In some cases, it's essential, but it only works temporary. You know, it doesn't matter how much I try to fix this with the mind, this existing programming, it's not going to change. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm being in the barn. If I use that example, I, I'm in the barn and I'm shoveling shoveling shed from one corner to another corner. There's nothing we can do with this programming. Okay, then what do we do? We can, we can, we have to use a whole different system. We have to bypass the mind and go into this different system, which I visually show like this. I call it angular reality, because in comparison to the current reality, it's always in an angle, it's always there. It's always accompanies this reality. So I call it angular reality. So in order to, 
in order to have a clean sheet in the mind, I would have to go to the angular reality, angle, angel, you know, you can almost use it interchangeably. So the angular reality is that's directly tuned into the, uh, <clears throat> into the intelligence of the body that's pure and working perfectly fine, even though the mind is crazy, this isn't. My body works even if I have crazy thoughts, even, even if I'm sick, the body still works. So that's the super intelligence that we want to use in order to bypass the mind so that this existing programming is not gonna be relevant. If we don't do it, it's kind of stupid. It's like, a, you know, like I said, cooking something on the top of another dish. Okay. So to, to access this, when, when we access this and we do some exercises, it basically automatically gives us a, a, clean, a clean sheet. Now the programming is not there. Accessing this will give us a clean sheet, which we can now program. Manifestation is self-programming. If you have a clean sheet, there's no existing programming, and we acquire some freed will or freed attention, the attention is all, when we program, the attention is all encumbered already by the programming. If it's not there, we have freed attention that now we can use to program a clean sheet program. Uh, uh, and then that is the actual manifestation. So to first eliminate the law of attraction means that to eliminate the existing programming by focusing on angular reality, have a clean sheet, and then consider putting on the top of it, which I want to put on the top, which is what do I really want to manifest? So it starts with a clean sheet. That would be in the conventional teaching of manifestation. That would be equivalent to let go. Excellent, yeah. That's wonderful, thank you. I know if, uh, you have so many amazing techniques and practices that you and I have been doing together and you teach in your courses and uh, we do see great results. And I know it's not possible to do that in a short video, but can you give us like maybe one quick example of, of, of how to access the intelligence of the body? Well, how do we, uh, <clears throat> how to access the intelligence of the body is extremely easy. Next sentence, accessing the intelligence of the body is extremely hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You often say that it's either easy or impossible. <laughs> it's either, exactly, it's either easy or impossible. Uh, it's, it's impossible from the perspective that if you want your mind to cooperate with going beyond the mind, you're crazy. It's not going to cooperate at all. It's going to insist to use the current limitations, the current constraints to make something. And the current programming is not going to cooperate. Therefore, therefore, it makes the manifestation not hard, but impossible. This is going to oppose this at the beginning. Bypassing the mind and going directly into the intelligence of the body is the solution to a good life. Uh, these are universal laws. I didn't invent them. This is not Gabor's teaching. I'm just able to speak about it. It's been well practiced. It works all the time. I have not seen it not working. Now, so if we're able to activate the body's intelligence and make it conscious, and we're able to withstand the attack of the mind, which for which there is techniques, no problem, then it's reasonably easy. So it's either easy or impossible. Uh, when we have, when we're able to have attention on the body or body part, right? That will automatically brings forth this intelligence to be used. The mind, the mind's job is to oppose this. 
It's going to go, it's, it's going to start comparing. It's going to do all kinds of things for you not to have this pure attention in and on the body. Yeah. So it's either easy or impossible. And once it's done correctly, I have not seen this not working. Yeah. Never mind the 0.01% success. It's 100% success. The universe guarantees, not me. I've actually heard from people who, you have a couple of videos on our YouTube channel. One is called Functional Silence. And the other one is your interview with Conscious TV at the very end you give 15 minutes of this practice. The so both yes. those videos, you actually guide people how to activate, how to access that universal intelligence of the body. So um, I've seen people use it and, and write to, to us afterwards saying, oh my God, I just did it. Now I get the difference between ordinary meditation, mainstream meditation, and what it is to actually step out of the mind. So. In the interest of time, of course, we can't get into it now, but I would encourage people to go on the YouTube channel and find those videos. Again, it's, uh, I'll put it in the description. It's functional silence is one of them. The other one is the last bit after the interview uh, that Gabor had with Conscious TV. So this is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering these questions. Um, if you heard something here that you like or, or didn't understand, feel free to write to us at info at gaborharsani.com and we'll be happy to respond. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.